I'm going to start again with this one because it's kind of gone wrong. What it is, right, is we've got this circuit here, which is the... Um, so, we haven't got this uh, cross-connecting transistor, but we've got everything else. So, we've got, actually, what we've got here is a... That's a 4K7, I put a 10K in instead. Okay. And so, we've got this circuit here, which is a, a potential divider, driving emitter follower onto a P-channel. And this, resist, this resistor here means that it's a current limiting circuit. Okay. And then down here we've got our 1K, which is what it's currently limiting against, and our 20 volt uh, Zener. And then we've got our uh, ZTX pair there driving our Bull 58s. Okay, keeps going bright. Um, so this is just an emitter follower pair basically, where we're using uh, the drivers in complementary. So as to give us our balance. And uh, it's driving uh, one of the gates. And that's the high side one. In actual fact, it, it's actually this circuit because it's driving a low side one. But it's, it doesn't really matter. So what we've got here is that full circuit. We've even got the Arduino. Uh, the only difference is that it's using a 10K in there and we've got an LED, which we're using to monitor. Okay, there's the LED. And so this is the circuit here. This is the, uh, the logic side up to the uh, QFP, the, um, no sorry, the uh, N channel MOSFET and then on this side here we've got our two ZTXs driving our two balls and our 20 volt uh, Zener and our 1K resistor. Okay, so the input is coming in across from this wire which is coming in from the Arduino. Okay, and that's going into that and I've got a 10K resistor in there. And then the output, which is coming from the balls, is going out through to our uh, IGBT into the gate, and we're gating across that supply there. And this supplies the 12 volt line input. Right. And the motor is obviously turning. Here it is. Okay, but it's turning very, very slowly, simply because I was trying to measure uh, what our rise and fall time is on our uh, IGBT. And this is the gate. This is actually actually on a real gate, right? And so we've basically got a short. Uh, let's go to the software and see it. So we are running at 37k hertz, right? And we've got a, an equal mark space ratio to 50%. Okay, so that's the actual mark space ratio. And uh, what we've got here, and it might not show on this, but basically it's saying 0.8 microseconds. So the rise time, and you can see my scope is actually struggling to maintain the sample rate. But basically the rise time is 0.8 microseconds. And you can see it looks symmetrical. I've actually measured the other side as well, and it is 0.8. So we have 800 nanoseconds rise and fall time. Okay? Now my target was 1 microsecond. So we are inside our one microsecond by 200 nanoseconds and I am chuffed because that's good that is well good we've got our rise time and our fall time those balls are getting warm actually I'm quite surprised they must be passing quite a bit of current <coughs> it may be there's a little bit of a, a mini shoot through on there so I might put a resistor in between them on the bases okay what the ZTX is doing yeah they're cold and make sure all these guys are cold as well yes they are the, I don't expect the uh, P-channel MOSFET to get hot, no it's not. Those balls are getting hot because they are actually using, what it is is that they're sourcing and sinking the full gate current and they may be in linear mode and that's the reason why they're getting a bit warm. But the full circuit is there and it's driving the gate and we have our target rise and fall time for the gate and it's driving a real motor so we've got a real inductor on the output as well. right? And we're driving a real IGBT as well. Yeah, and I am officially chuffed because that was what I was trying to do. Make sure we can get that gate to turn on and off in within one microsecond. And we've got it now. Now you can see the temperature is 21 degrees. That's on that sensor. And originally, if I reset this, I'm just going to reset it. The motor. So we can go back to something a little bit more normal. On the... Uh... Right, now you can hear the motor. I'll just turn the audio off. Go. So that's a 1% uh, mark space ratio. Okay, and obviously now, if I take the audio off, we can see the full, there's the full PWM, okay, which 
we're now confident okay now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it rise to one window I'm going to make it rise uh, we'll do to our ten percent Ten percent mark space ratio. Okay, which is actually a frequency of a hundred hertz instead of nearly forty k, uh, which is quite impressive actually. Uh, yep. So that's a ten percent mark space ratio. Obviously, our spindle is turning, and it, oh yeah, we're nice. And what we're going to do now is just see how the temperature rises because now we've got a really good clean mark space ratio of less than a microsecond. I can't see that rising very, very much. So we're going to come back. Oh, so I'm 23. I'll leave it for about five minutes. That should be enough to get some indication as to the the, heat, the temperature rise. But it's uh, okay. So I'm going to stop it there, and I'll take a photograph of it after a while, and we'll see what it rose to. Okay.